thank you for joining us for our Friday Farm Chat. Um, it's a very windy Friday here. We are in Southeast Iowa um, at a farm of the Sabosky family. Um, Rick Sabosky and Larry Sabosky is over there. It's actually, um, I'm Cindy Hall with the Iowa Agriculture Literacy Foundation. We're excited to have you join us today. Um, I made uh, the trip down to Southeast Iowa back to my family's farm um, to show you my dad and brother planting today. Um, so we're at the farm, like I said before, of, of we're going to be talking to Rick Sabosky, um, my brother, and uh, we're here, he, today he's planting, he's been planting the last two weeks, and we're going to show you how the, the tractor works, and then go for a ride in the tractor, so you can ride along with him. Um, so before I show him, I'm going to turn the camera, and I'm just going to show you a little bit about where we are today, and I'll have him to explain a little bit more of exactly where we are. Okay, so I'll show you the field. We're down in Southeast Iowa, Keokuk County. And there's my dad. Dad, you can wave. Wave to his dad. That's my dad, Larry Sabosky. And here's my brother, Rick Sabosky. Um, he does most of the planting on their farm. Um, so Rick, can you tell us a little bit about your farm, your farming operation? Well, I started farming as soon as I graduated college in 1996. And I went to college for agriculture and our opera we used to have livestock and we've now gotten out of that we're 100 percent corn and soybean farm we raise seed beans and commercial corn very good um so rick how long when did the planting season start for you this year boy it's been a blur because everything's <laughs> run together but just about two weeks ago we started planting corn put all the corn in in a week and here we are with beans and hopefully in a couple three days we have that done if mother nature cooperates very good how do you determine um, when it's time to plant well soil conditions like today it's dried out um, a lot of it is you know calendar but the, the conditions just have to be right um, according to crop insurance we can't start until April 11th otherwise the crops are not covered for insurance but uh, and I don't know, I guess it's just something you have. Okay, but what are the, what are optimal planting conditions? What do the seeds need to germinate? And what, well, we need, we need sunshine and warmth. Okay. Need, uh, temperatures well above 50, soil temp above 50 to be able to get it to germinate. Um, it, when we get in the cab, I've got some, some kernels of corn that I dug up from nine days ago they were planted. And they're well germinated. I suppose in three or four days they'll be out of the ground. Okay, okay, very good. Um, so he already said that they, they raise corn and soybeans, and I think you may have said this, that he's finished planting corn and now he's planting beans. Yep, we, we finished planting corn. We, we hustled because the forecast kept saying it was going to rain and going to rain, and it didn't rain and it didn't rain, and we just kept going and got done with the corn and decided, well, let's get going with the beans. Some guys have enough manpower to do corn and beans both at the same time. We do not, so we get the corn done, and then we switch over and start planting our soybeans. Okay. Um, so we got here at the field at a good time. Um, my dad was just pulling up with the seed wagon to fill the planter. So Rick, can you explain a, bit, a little bit about that and how you buy your seed and how you load it into the planter? We, we buy our seed in bulk, which are these big boxes that are about five feet tall and four feet square. And there's what's called 50 units in each one, which a unit is like one bag of seed, which would be about, a bag of seed is about 50 pounds and we lift it up and dump it into that wagon with the auger there and then we auger it off into the four big boxes here on the planter and when the planter's full we can do 50 acres give or take okay now rick i remember when i was back home and um dad was farming and i was a kid growing up on the farm we didn't have we didn't get our seed like that we got it in smaller bags so yeah. why has why has it shifted to this and what's the advantages of this? Uh, it shifted to it for efficiency. It's just quicker to be able to do it this way. Another is the seed companies, we get a discount for buying it in bulk. Just just like when you go to the grocery store, you buy in bulk, it's cheaper. So we, we buy our seed in bulk. It's it's a heck of a lot more convenient. Okay. Now you said You're efficiency. Not, so why is it why is it more efficient? We can this planter holds roughly fifty to sixty bags, fifty pound bags of beans, and throwing all them by hand will take some time. This planter we can fill in five minutes with this bulk okay. system here. 
So it reduces the labor? Oh, it reduces yeah. labor and saves a lot of Makes time. Makes it easier. It helps the backs too, right? Oh, you need to kid. <laughs> okay, so um, a little bit, in a little bit, Rick's going to explain. We'll take some close-up look at the planter parts to really see how it works. But first, we're going to watch as they fill it, and we'll take a look inside it. Yeah, seat. it's just about full right now, but yeah, okay. we left a little bit, okay. and we'll finish topping it off. Very good. We'll walk over there. Um, I forgot to include it in my introduction, but um, families, if you're watching us or anyone that's watching us, I encourage you to drop a line in the comments to let us know um, where you're watching from. Let's see. Here we go. That's treatment um, for bugs and disease. Okay, so how, how does that treatment help with bugs and diseases? Oh, well, it, it, I guess it's kind of like vaccines for ourselves. Yeah. You know, it, it's. So it keeps the pests away. It makes it non-desirable for the pests to eat the seeds. Or, it, exactly. Or, it's just like in your garden if you put yeah. any kind of insecticide or anything out there to keep the bugs yeah. away. So it, what it's, the, a, it's a treatment that they put on the, the seed itself. Corn and beans both have it. Okay. Um, some brands have different colors. Um, yep. A different brand of, of beans that I planted had uh, the beans were green. Yep. Now these are red. Same way with our seed corn. There's some treatments that are red and some that are green, some that are blue. Yep. But so, it's, it's it's for bugs and it's for um, uh, like cyst nematodes and uh, sudden death syndrome in soybeans. Okay. Something that early on if the bean gets a disease you can't see it early on but come august the beans could die early and that's something that stems from clear back at planting time okay okay great well looks like you've got a lot of beans about how often do you have to refill the planter well like i said earlier the planter will hold about 50 acres worth okay and we do about 20 acres 20 or maybe a little bit more acres per okay. hour. So Rick keeps saying the term acres. Most of you are probably aware of this, but an acre is a measurement of land that farmers use to measure land. And an acre is roughly the size of a football field yep, without football the end field. zone. Yep, yep. So how big is this field? How many acres? This field here that we're on, I think, is about 35 acres. About 35 acres. Yep. Okay. So Rick, um, one of the things Rick really loves is math. And when we get in the tractor, I'm going to ride with him for a while. I'll ask him some more math questions and how many seeds per acre. And, um, and he'll show you on the monitor all the data that he's getting. And he really loves that data. And he can make a lot of decisions um, based on that data he's getting. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll learn more about that when we get in the tractor. Get in the cab where it's a little less windy. Yes, yes. But um, before we get to the cab, Rick, can you kind of explain how the planter works? And kind of yep. show us some of the parts. Okay, so we put the seed in the box. It comes out into these big silver things up here. They go around and around, and you can see the little dimples on that, and there's a soybean in each one of those. There's air okay. pressure that holds Okay, let's it up take a close-up look at that. So these silver, they right, look like barrels to right us. Yep. There's, little, there's soybeans in oh. each one of those holes. Can you guys see that? Those pink, that pink? That's those pink soybeans that we saw. So they go from the, the box down into as, here. As this turns, these rubber wheels right here will push those beans out, which watch, I can do it with my finger here. You see those beans fall out of there and they fall down into a seed tube. Okay. And those tubes, air pushes those soybeans through these tubes right down through this planter row unit and Right back here, I don't know if you can really see it or not, but clear back in here, it blows it right into the ground. Okay, 
Now, I see these two discs right here. What are they? What do the, they do? Up, up front, there's two discs that cut a slot in the soil. Okay. A close -up. That you cuts a slot in the soil. The seed gets dropped in that slot. Okay. And then these two smaller discs back here squeeze that soil back down around that seed. And then lastly is the press wheel back here that just kind of like basically taking your foot and just tamping yep. it down. So if you've ever planted a garden, the first thing you need to do is you need to make the hole for your seeds. Um, so you might take a hoe and make a, a line in the soil for yep, your seeds. Yep, a trench. Yep. Yep, you trench, you drop the seeds in, and then you can't just leave them like that. you got to cover it up. So what the the back discs and that wheel do is cover the soil, cover the slot back up yep, that you made. Yep, they, they squish the slot back together, and then this tie right here kind of pats, pat, pats it down. So they need good seed to soil contact, right? That's right, yep, so that the up. seed can get the moisture that's in the ground to get it to germinate. Okay, excellent. Um, do you want to tell us about the markers? I see these big long things up here. What are those? Those are called markers, and you put them, you fold those out, so that whenever you turn around for the next pass, you know where to, to drive the tractor. You can point the middle of the tractor right down the mark that that leaves. Okay. Or why they're called a marker. Gotcha. Okay, well shall we get in the tractor? Yep, let's do okay. it. give you a, um, a look at the germinating seeds that we dug up a little bit ago. Yep. Hold on. Okay, he's micing back up. Trying to. <laughs> so on the way over here, my dad stopped at a field and dug up um, some seeds that they planted. Dad thinks that exactly a week ago today that you guys planted that field. The beans? Yeah. Yeah, the beans. I, I didn't bring corn. Oh, oh no, you got it there. Okay. Right here. Right here's the beans. Yep. So I brought some in that cup. There's just untreated soybeans. So that's what the soybeans look like um, before they're treated with the seed. And then you get a better angle. Okay, I'm getting some sun. Okay, so you can see how this one, this one right here has a good sprout on it. Yep. So you notice they've almost, they've at least doubled in size. Don't Absolutely, you think? yep. From a regular, before yep. they were planted, they're more round shaped and then they um, look more like a... A, a jelly bean. bean. Yeah, jelly, that's a good way <laughs> to put it, a jelly bean. And you can see how that seed coat has started to crack um, or slip off and yep. you don't see that coloring anymore. And then the roots starting to come out there. That's that's the soybeans. Yep. Yep. Now, right over here, this is some corn that was planted on the 29th of April, so about nine days ago. I just dug this up about an hour ago. You can see right there's the the root, and right here's the sprout. This will be the part that'll come up out of the ground, right here. Okay. And as you can see, you know this this corn has the seed treatment on it as well. Okay. Yeah, so that's, I mean, quite a bit of growth. Just, that's... Nine days. Yep. Eight or nine days. Okay. So those two weren't planted too far apart, the, the beans and the no, corn. Not, I think Dad said that, that was your first yeah, field Yeah, the beans. beans was the first first field of beans, and this corn was okay. the second to last field of corn. If the beans were a little further along in their germination, we could compare them better. But um, corn and soybeans are two different types of plants. One is a monocot and one is a dicot. Um, and the, <laughs> Rick's giving me a look when I'm using all these science plant terms. He's rolling his eyes. Um, but it's they different. They differ in the way um, their plant parts are different. I'm going to keep it very simple. I won't get into all the details of, of cotyledons and uh, dicots. But the soybean, as it starts to germinate, it actually splits in half. And the two halves of the soybean, actually, if Rick kind of rubs it a little bit, you probably will be able to split it. Try to break it in half. Well, won't go. may not be quite far enough along yet. But anyway, the two halves of the bean um, will right turn it, there. there we go. Those are the cotyledons and they will turn into the first two leaves of the plants, plant or the cotyledon leaves. 
and the cotyledon gives um, the energy, um, the, the seed, the energy that it needs um, to germinate and grow until it can until it has leaves and can turn green and create its own food through through photosynthesis. And that's its growing point with the cold weather they're talking about for tonight. Soybeans that are above the ground, if they're above the ground and get frozen, that its growing point is above the ground, so therefore it would be killed. Now corn on the other oh. hand, its growing point stays below ground until two, three leaves. So if there if you see corn up around right now, if it gets froze off, as long as it's, you know, as we call it, boot high or less, it should be okay. It may kill that that's on the top, but that growing point is still below the ground, so it'll keep coming. Okay, so is that why generally you plant corn before Typically, beans? Typically, that's why corn is planted before beans, but in the last several years, research has shown that if you can get your beans in early and they don't get frosted, <laughs> hint, hint, and a big key. It's all a risk, right? Yes, if you can get them put in early, that there is a benefit to early planted beans, but it's all dependent on Mother Nature. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for showing us that, Rick. And I think I will climb on in um, and shut the door and we'll go for a little ride. Yep. Okay. Thanks for bearing with us through a lot of jiggling. It was real windy out there, so the camera was pretty shaky. Um, and now we're tight quarters <laughs> in the tractor. But Are we ready? Will, yep. Let's take off. So I'll show you straight forward first, and then once we get going, I'll turn back around so you can see the planter behind us. So it's much more comfortable in here, Rick, than it is outside. Yes, it is. Um, what are some of the, I guess, the amenities or the way, the things that make the tractor comfortable and make it kind of easier, doable to spend? You're spending a lot of time in here. Oh yeah, it's, it's it's nothing to spend 12, 16, 18 hours a day in in this machinery during the busy season. I mean, it's just like your car. You got your heat and air conditioner, a nice air ride seat. Yep. I'm in the little buddy seat on the side, but um, I wish <laughs> I got the good seat. If it was bigger, I could show you this is seat. Yeah, it's a it's a nice air ride seat. But I noticed one interesting thing here. So I'm giving you a zoomed in spot uh, view of the steering wheel, and Rick's hands are back there. <laughs> He's hands free. How's that happening, Rick? It's this monitor over here is what's running it. It's it's being used via GPS, global positioning system, and this button right here is what I touch whenever I turn around and the tractor takes over. Okay, very cool. How long has that been around, Rick? How long have you it's, been using it? It's, this tractor, when this tractor was new, none of this stuff was available. So this okay. is all add-on to older equipment. Today's new machinery has installed from the factory. But it's been around since probably the late 90s, early 2000s. Okay. Is when it, and it, I'd say it's taken a real good foothold in the last 10 to 15 years. Okay. Okay, I'm going to turn around now and see if I can get a view from the back. Pardon me if my finger goes over the camera for a second. But here's the view from the back. Now, Rick, we didn't talk about it earlier, but I know the field's already green. If I drove past here from the shot that they're seeing, it almost looks like it's yep. planted. Um, why is that? And what do you, did you do anything to prepare the field for planting? This, this is a no-till field and this field also had a cover crop of rye put on it. So there is um, cereal rye that is still growing. It has yet to be terminated or sprayed and killed yet. That'll get done in the next couple of days. It'll get sprayed and, and then the field will turn before the soybeans come up. Okay, so why why did you just decide to go with that versus just, um, you know, cultivate the, the field? You know, sometimes you drive past the field and you see a fresh, fluffy bed of soil there. Why do some farmers choose to go with this method? This is a hillier field. It's and it the soil will erode a lot easier. Okay. So therefore, we chose to do the the, the cereal rye, the cover crop, okay. to help hold the soil in place. Okay. So there's the two things that he just explained. They're both helping to keep that soil in place. So um, you can kind of see through this last year. This was planted to corn, right, Rick? Yep. This is as you can see the rows straight ahead. Yep. Those are last year's corn stalks. You see that the stubble right there. Um, 
the part that's not green is yeah. last year's corn. Yeah, last year's corn. So leaving that plant residue, the stalks from last year laying right there, um, you know, those corn roots were still in the ground and yep. are still holding things in place. That keeps that soil from washing away if you get heavy rains yep. um, because it's a hilly field. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's a fairly hilly field that um, a, a heavy rain would really wash that soil away. If just, it was just like the grass in your so, yard, it, yep. it holds the soil together. Yep, and then the cover crops, is it, really like the grass yep, in the that's, yard. That, yep, that's yep. what the cover crop is. Okay. So, um, will that that cover crop compete with the with the, 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 soybeans? the soybeans? No, that we'll coming. get it sprayed here okay. in the next couple of days to terminate or kill yep. what's out here, so that there's nothing left but the soybeans. So that the soybeans does, do not have competition. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, there you can kind of see over the crest of the hill. Yeah, it's kind of hilly. So Rick, what's some of the math you do? Tell us some of the numbers that, that are rolling through your head as you're planting well, or you're making this, your decisions. This monitor right over here, as you can see, it says 140,000. I don't know okay. if you can It's really kind of hard see to see that, that but well, we believe him. It says 100, I'll verify that, 140,000. What's yep, that mean? That That is telling, I've got that set to tell the planter how much to plant. Okay. 140,000 seeds per acre. Now this monitor right over here is telling me what's actually taking place. Right there, that row 17 has got 139,300 seeds that are going in per acre. The number right below it is how many seeds per foot. So every foot out there, there's 4.8 seeds and that's in each row. And my rows are 18 inches apart. So every 12 inches, there's almost five seeds put in the ground. Okay. This monitor over here is telling me our speed, how many acres we've covered so far this morning, and it's also running the auto steer. These two green arrows down here are, this planter will turn on and off <coughs> as I come into what's already planted. When we come to the end here, this yellow is all what's already done. You'll see when I get to the end, these green arrows will turn gray. That means it's automatically shutting that planter off so that I'm not over planting okay. in areas that have been planted. Here we're coming up to it and there they shut off. Okay, wow. So then we'll turn around. We raise the planter up out of the ground. We'll turn around and then we'll let it back down. A little bit a little rough. bump there. He's yeah, trying to throw bit, me off the seat. A little bit rough. <laughs> So Rick, besides you not having to, to steer this straight down a row, what are the advantages of precision agriculture and the, uh, that auto steer system? Well, the auto steer and like I said, the planter shutting off kind of go hand in hand. It saves a lot of seed and the auto steer saves overlaps or skips, areas where you don't plant because you couldn't see that marker track okay. or places where you plant too much and you get overlap, you don't have this map over here to see when you don't have that and it's easy to overlap and that overlap waste seed and waste money yeah the seed is money and it, it just gets things down to a science okay so it saves money and is more efficient and more, more efficient and the auto steering in the tractor <laughs> saves a lot of fatigue at the end of the day it seems like oh you can drive your own tractor you're, you're fine <laughs> doesn't seem and, like that and hard and you're work. right it is it but at the end of the day, you can you can be turned around watching what's going on with your planter a lot more, yeah. keeping a better eye on it. Of maybe there's maybe the monitor isn't telling you that a row's plugged up, but there's a bunch of trash that's dragging in front of it that you wouldn't typically see because you would be facing forward, focusing on where you're going. Okay. There's there's a lot of things that are going on all at the same okay. time. Well, we're going to wrap it up here, but um, I will just wrap it up by. Um, Rick, what, is, what happens to the corn and the soybeans that you raise? Where do they go and what, what are they used for? Like I said, the, the soybeans that we raise, some of what we raise is considered what's called soybean or seed beans. And those go to a local processing plant that they clean them and then they treat them. And then they're what other farmers buy next year to okay. plant. Other soybeans, uh, they can get put on a barge, shipped to the the Gulf of Mexico, put on a ship, and shipped all around the world for different things. Okay. 
So soybeans are used for... Um, they're used for livestock feed. Yeah. They can be used for uh, soybean meal in livestock feed rations. And then also used to make biodiesel. Yep. Um, fuel, diesel fuel, fuel. That, fuel that we burn in yep. these And then some, some food products. Yep. As well. And then a lot Any of food soy products. Soy protein, soy. Crayons. Yep. I mean, Lots you, of you things. Soy it. ink. There's a lot of, There's a lot of soy products. Yeah. And um, we won't go a lot into corn, but just a reminder that 99% of the corn grown in Iowa, as well as even 99% of the corn grown in the United States, is not sweet corn that we eat. It is um, field corn, uh, or, or dent corn is another name for it. It's used for livestock feed, for ethanol, and then also for food for us, but in the form of corn chips and taco shells and, um, and uh, cornmeal and other things that it's a process, cereal um, and things like that. So I think we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you for joining us. We didn't take a lot of questions. I didn't see many any questions down in here, um, but when we were outside, we had a lot of sun glare. So we'll make sure to take a close look at these comments. And if there's any questions um, that were asked or that you have after, please type them in the comments and uh, Rick and I will go back and answer those questions. So thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you, Rick. Thank um, you for joining us. I think my brother did a pretty good job, don't you think? Um, it's uh, fun to, to ride along in a tractor and really see what goes on in here. There's a lot of technology to it and a lot of math and a lot of science um, that goes into that farmer in the field planting. So thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye.